and Board of Commissioners work session for Wednesday, September 9th, 2020. We review a work session discussion meeting minutes. Any changes? Move the department head report. Anybody department head report? We have a name. Wait. Wait, I'm sorry. I just wanted to tell you that the RFPs for the carpet and the um, uh, Bridgewater Crossing are out. Uh, Bridgewater Crossing. Um, there's a walk through next Tuesday. The carpet will be next Thursday, and both will be due at the end of the month. Have, do you, uh, Dan? Was it Dan? You going to reach out to some carpet? I did. Okay, so there's maybe more interest this time. I, I have more. Okay. okay. All right. Good. All right. Any other department head report? Hearing none. Solicitor. Prior to jumping over to the resolutions, just want to announce to the public that the tax upset sale that is scheduled for September 14th generally is always held in this room in the courthouse. We're going to move that outside in the back parking lot of the courthouse. So you would still come in as normal report to the tax assessment office, uh, but rather than holding it here physically inside the building, we're gonna have a trailer uh, up out back with a space blocked off for the individuals to hold the sale outside. We have 55 resolutions on the agenda for tomorrow. Uh, you'll see a lot of MHMR. A lot of those are just amendments to various programs. 24, 45 through 49 are all tax exonerations. 38 through 41, these are agreements that we did through Premier Power. These are locking in various uh, gas rates and electric rates throughout the county. We previously brought this up probably about a little over a month ago, but these are just the formal agreements to lock in those various rates. 42, Bruners does the garbage collection here at the county. Uh, there is a current agreement in place. This is just a one year extension of that agreement. 54 as it is right now, uh, may be pulled tomorrow unless we get more information from PCOR. And then 55 is for the leasing of three vehicles with the Sheriff's Department they're leased to own. And if, unless there's any questions for the law department, we do need an executive session to discuss some personal matters. I don't have any questions for the law department. No. None. Board of Commissioners, Commissioner Rand. Um, just a couple of things um, to let people know: uh, the the eviction stay was extended by uh, President Judge Mancini through the end of the year. Uh, I know we have a lot of funds coming in from DC, DCED to help landlords and tenants um, stay in, in place for a while. But I know there was some controversy over that, some demonstrations over it, uh, and the judge did have the authority to do that. So uh, I was pleased to do that, uh, see that, and also that uh, our community development folks um, are getting funding to help do that. There's a lot of funding. It's hard to keep track of it all, but <laughs> the different sources and where it's coming in and what it's earmarked for. Um, but it, I want to let people uh, know that as well. Um, there is going to be a siren test um, Thursday, uh, 10 a.m. It will go for three minutes. The world will not be coming to an end. <laughs> Shell isn't having issues. It's uh, simply a test. So I wanted to alert people of that. I was on a recap meeting last night. Recap is the Route 18. Um, advisory panel group for the industries along uh, the corridor there um, from the nuke plant on through uh, to Shell. And uh, I, I just wanted to highlight a couple of things that were mentioned in that meeting that I, last night, that uh, it was a Zoom meeting, but um, they were interesting. Uh, BASF uh, doesn't get a lot of notoriety, which is probably good for them, but they're a great company and they've been a great company here in Beaver County for a long time. They've had no COVID issues, by the way. None of their personnel at the Manaka plant uh, have come down with COVID. But what I want to talk about that doesn't get enough press is the impact that the petrochemical business businesses like the SF have on our everyday life. Uh, some of the materials they make goes into the adhesive that goes to the 3M um, mask that, that uh, are made and uh, Everybody that was uh, hungered down at home buying paint and stains. Bear, Bear is their biggest customer for some of their products. A lot of uh, 
stains and paint uh, that, were, that were bought. Tim Muscari from the mall was on there. And, and this is where I hope when we get into the CARES Act, uh, I wish there was more we could do, but uh, they're down about a dozen businesses in, in the mall since the start of COVID. Uh, it's the 50th anniversary of the Beaver Valley, Beaver Valley Mall. Um, and and they're, uh, they're trying hard, obviously, to do what they can to keep uh, the businesses there, but keep the mixed use uh, going. Um, but small business, retail, restaurants, personal service, that's the, and nonprofits, they're, they're the heart and soul, I think, of Beaver County's economy in Beaver County. And I'm hoping we can do some good with some of the $14.8 million that, that we're given there. And speaking of nonprofits, uh, Mike Rubino was also on there. And uh, there are 150,000 behind schedule uh, on their fundraising. Last year, they finally got back over a million dollars worth of uh, United Way uh, contributions. And uh, this year, it's going to be a struggle um, to get back there. Uh, and uh, job training for Beaver County is on the thing. They're, they're uh, on the phone. Um, most of their inquiries about how to collect unemployment, and they aren't the unemployment office. But they have over 400 job openings and very few job seekers, um, which is disturbing and uh, difficult for us to figure out what role we can play um, to get people back to work when there are jobs and uh, obviously the jobs that uh, people aren't interested in uh, at this point in time, mainly because of COVID, I suppose. And uh, Shell was on the phone and they just reported that they're about 5,300 employees back at the site, which is probably the max they're going to be at for, for quite some time. So I just thought I'd uh, relay some of those um, pieces of information. Uh, the other thing is I've been talking to Doreen, um, we're up over 23,000 applications um, for the mail-in ballots uh, so with still several months to go. And there is a bill pending in Harrisburg, 2626, um, still has to go through the Senate and uh, the governor. The, the, the bill that's in front of people now allows for three days of pre-canvassing uh, instead of only being able to open uh, the ballots the day of the election. Uh, three days is better than just the day of the election, but if we have 30 or 40,000 envelopes to open, it's gonna be a long time before we get those results. So I'm, I'm hoping that Harrisburg comes through and gives us some assistance because what we do have in our control, I feel very confident uh, that mail-in or in-person voting, which quite frankly, if it's good weather um, and with the COVID precautions we're taking, I would encourage people to go to the polls, polls and vote. Um, but if people don't want to, I have no problem with them mailing in. I have full confidence that uh, their vote will be counted as well. But um, don't expect results by 11 p.m. election day <laughs> uh, at, at this rate. So, uh, and, and the last thing I, I got to notice yesterday, there's another food distribution. This one's going to be at the Pathways Church on Braden School Road uh, in Chippewa from uh, 11 to 1 p.m., similar to the one that was at the Ice Arena uh, a couple of weeks ago. It's uh, the food bank from, from Pittsburgh. Uh, they gave out, I think, 250, you know, boxes, uh, cars, uh, so it's another drive up food, food distribution issue. And just one last thing, um, we lost um, a long time uh, corrections officer due to cancer. Her, her viewing was Friday and funeral was Saturday, Charlene Simmons, and um, uh, I just wanted to give my condolences uh, not only to her family, um, but to the jail family as well. Uh, I know the warden said uh, she was the sweetest, uh, kindest, best <laughs> uh, corrections officer you, you ever want to run across. Uh, it was a very poignant thing to see uh, Friday evening. So uh, my condolences to uh, all the correction officers and the people that uh, had uh, come in contact with Charlie over the years. So uh, that's it for me. Any other business? Any audience participation? Uh, again, we need to reconvene from executive session. No. We'll move into executive session, not reconvene. Thank you. <coughs>